Okay. Here we go. So I'm just gonna be taking it easy tonight. Focusing on getting uh, the extra honeycomb cell things, whatever they're technically called. Feel up to it, might try going after Gruntilda, but first it's uh, lightning in the blue. So, Treasure Trove Cove is first. Got my thing I'm looking through. stuff that in there. Is up here. there and then uh, the actual entrance Wee! is here. Wee! No, that's the thing for Clanker's cabin. Further um, more stuff. Into that water that goes to the puzzle for uh, Quick Clockwood. Here. I believe this is where we want to go. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Did I miss anything by not looking around the back here? No. Right here. We go. Uh... 
of the green ledges near Nipper located within the water. Hello. God, I love that music. It's good stuff indeed. So, how's the hunt coming along? Well, pretty much just started. And... You feeling better from uh, Wednesday? Yeah. You don't have to say what it was. I'm just checking to see if you're feeling better. Yeah, I, I am. I'm glad you are. Because it always bugs me out when my friends aren't feeling hot. Mm. Also, fuck that shark. Yes. Now, thankfully, I've kind of gotten a bit used to how he is by this he's point. Not a, yeah, he's not as scary as he used to be, but that first initial shot will yeah. always get a new player, right? Yeah. Especially when you see the sign that says, like, beware of shark, you think, oh, it, it's just part of the scenery, right? Mm. <laughs> they are kidding! Now... I could look up where the honeycomb is. Do you want me to tell you where it is, or just hit? Oh, I, I've already got a, a guide up that I'm going go with. Oh, fair enough. Oh, there it is. Yeah, right out in the water, because of course there'll be a hunt in the water. <laughs> okay, so you are following your guide because you're taking this seriously. You want to get this done. Yeah, this is kind of more of a, like, I, I, I feel like I've done a decent bit of exploration and trying to figure out the, the nooks and crannies of these levels. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm making sure I have a good, decent shot when it comes to beating Gruntilda when I finally have to yeah, deal like with her. You, you know how to beat her. The problem is resource management. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what? While you're at it, look up the Cheeto pages. That way you can maybe up your... Uh, you know, your, your inventory I, size. I, I, I'm not so into that myself. Like, honestly, the big thing for me was just health. Fair enough, fair enough. God, I love the sound effects in this game. Mm. They're just iconic to me at this point. They... I mean, funnily enough, a game whose characters are named after musical instruments has pretty good sound design. Uh, that yeah. Is true. yeah. I kind of get the, like, or at least I would hope that, like, Grant Kirkhope had some fun working on the sound and music for this. Oh, definitely. So, in other, in other gaming news, today I beat Makai Kingdom. It was pretty fun. Though, as far as, like, the Disgaea games are concerned, the Kai Kingdom isn't one of the better spin-offs, but it was one of the earlier ones. Like, it was made even before Disgaea 2, so... It, it, it's one of those ones that's, like, more straight-up RPG than tactical, right? Oh, no, no. There is. I'm just pointing... No, no, no. It's still a tactical RPG, and it's actually unique in how it does it with... It's, you know how, like, with tactical RPGs, it's squares? Mm -hmm. Now, with this, you got, like, movement radius. Ah. Like, you get a circle around you, and you can move anywhere within it. And there's also, you know, more emphasis on, like, reincarnation and getting your character to gain skills throughout the reincarnation, weapon mastery and such. And there's a lot of weapons, too. 
You know, you got, you got like swords, uh, spears, axes. You got the standard stuff. Uh, what about syringes, frying pans, custard cream pies, the freaking uh, thunder drum that you know Raiden has? <laughs> An eclectic mix, indeed. Yeah. Oh, and tanks. Like you could have your character driving a goddamn uh, Metal Gear. Uh, I think they call it a Rex Metal Gear. They also have one that looks like uh, the Walker from uh, Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> hmm. Like, they have a bunch of stuff that's, like, basically parodies of other stuff. Uh, unfortunately, the vehicle, if you want to get through the late game and the new game plus, the vehicle stuff isn't exactly good. Really, it all boils down to... Uh, Hitting them hard enough so that they can't hit you back. Hmm. You know, fuck defense, go offense. So usually it's the spellcasters. Or my samurai who is a glass cannon. But as far as earlier spin-offs are concerned, I think it's still pretty fun. I at least like it better than Soul Nomad and the World Eater. That one is definitely more of a slog. Hmm. Yeah, that one does, is not as good. Although, I am excited to go and replay La Pucelle Tactics. That one I was actually one of my first ones of the Nippon Library. You get to basically play an ass kicking nun. <laughs> It's kind of... uh, no, go ahead. I was gonna say it's kind of interesting seeing how games will handle like their first spin-offs or sequels and seeing how they differ from the main game and just like, okay, how much should we tweak with this uh this idea? Although Makai Kingdom did start the uh the trend of the reoccurring bonus boss. The there is a bonus boss character called Asagi, who will keep showing up, who was from the cancelled Makai Wars game. And every time she shows up, she basically tries to kill the protagonist and take control of the game. Okay. <laughs> yeah. She's become, she, she's that running gag, you know, bonus boss. And it's, it's funny to me. Although their first, one of their first technical RPGs was Rasphony, a musical adventure, which I'm excited to play. But that's one I never got a chance to play. And the original PlayStation 1 version that actually has, like, it being musical cutscenes and everything. Whereas the DS remake, it kind of got rid of that. Yeah. That one is one of those harder-to-find originals. So nice to re-releasing some of these old games. And at a good price, too. It's always nice to see a company make things more available. Yeah. I don't mind repaying for some of these older games because, especially with, like, uh, the Nippanichi games, they usually, when they re... they give you, like, a remake or a port, they will include all of the DLC, or in there, in a lot of the PS2 games, uh, the PSP extended stuff. Usually Japan only, because the PSP games were from were Japan exclusive. So nice bonus, actually, to actually get to experience the uh, extra story or get the cool bonus characters. Usually the overpowered ones. <laughs> yeah, this guy is one of those games where they want you to be overpowered. They want you to become a god of destruction. Hello, Gubna. 
Hello, plot. Hey, guys. Hey, comrade. You sound kind of tired. You okay, man? Well, I reckon I'll go to bed in half an hour to an hour. Well, it's nice to have you here in the meantime. Yes, um, one game. Jeez, that bolts in what what I assume is his air hole. Can't be healthy. Well, probably not. <laughs> I'm pretty sure just being in this pool can't also be healthy. And this is your final stretch before finish in the game, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I tried... I tried being the final boss last time and it didn't work out. No way. So yeah, now I'm trying to he pick up the, to... the health uh, upgrades. Yeah, he knows how to beat her. The problem is, is that it's a bit of a frustrating mess of no real easy way to heal in the fight. Because once those health pickups are gone, they're gone. Got it. No, I think about it, I think then when it comes to those kinds of uh, old 3D games, there have only ever been two that I've played in my entire life. Rayman 2 and Legacy of Cain Defiance. Legacy of Cain. Man, now there's a game where a bunch of the titles. It's crazy. Like, yeah. Although the original Legacy of Cain, like the PlayStation 1 one, had a lot of great voice acting, including the late Tony J. Mm -hmm. Frollo, Fro if, you know, from Hunter Dragon Notre Dame, you don't remember who he played. You know, when I initially bought the game, because <coughs> I was like, before the era of internet for me, I was aware that Legacy of Kane had you know, some kind of other titles, but since the back of the, um, you know, the box of the, you know, the thing with the CD didn't say anything about them, I thought that I was actually buying the first one in series. Turned out I bought the last one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, it made for a very interesting playthrough, gotta say. While I was confused as fuck, it actually was kind of engaging. You know, it 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 felt like. Mhm. Mm I get what you mean. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, you know what they say every game is somebody's first. Ooh. And 
there is a certain charm to the old uh, N64, GameCube, and PlayStation 2 platformer. And that is an era that cannot be replicated. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of the like the the N sixty four and PlayStation one ish kind of era in particular is kind of that like it's that kind of awkward growing pains Ooh. era when people weren't entirely sure how to do uh, a three D game. Yeah, and then the PS two and GameCube era, they knew what they know what they're doing, but they're trying to one up each other or be the best mascot platform. Hmm. Especially PlayStation 2. God, it was lousy with platformers. Which is, kind of yeah. which is kind of funny. Which is kind of funny because usually when I think of PS2, I think of it as the RPG machine of that uh, that era. Yeah, I think of it as the go second golden age for RPGs. But I can't deny it was also a platformer paradise. I mean, I guess it's kind of the thing that comes with how PS2 was kind of like the de facto, like... It was basically the winner of that generation of consoles. Oh, oh, definitely. It had one of the best... I mean, not only did it have DVD compatibility, so you could just get it just for that. But you also had... So, like, one of the best controllers, the best library, and some of the best hardware. Much as I love the GameCube, I can't deny that outside of the first-party Nintendo game, third-party wasn't as, uh, not as loved. I mean, it had some, but, yeah, like... Even like third party games, a lot of them were like, yeah, if, if it was, you know, if you, you went to the GameCube if you wanted certain things. Cause, like, I think um, the GameCube actually was more powerful than the PS2. Because I remember hearing that, like, oh, Resident Evil 4 needed some downgrades when it went to the PS2. But, like, that, that really was an era when the parity between the consoles was pretty much the same for the most part. Yeah. Um,. Like, oh. the Xbox. Well, I can't deny the Xbox at least was one of the more influential for online gaming. Oh, I yeah. I mean, it basically started online gaming. But goddamn, have you actually held a Duke controller? Yes. I, I, I was amazed that that was attempt number one for the Xbox controller, because, like, I, I consider myself to be someone who has pretty big hands, and I found that to be a very uncomfortable controller to pick up. Oh, yeah. But, honestly, I think that era was really good for gaming. I don't think... I mean, if you had any of those consoles, I, you couldn't be upset. Yeah. Yeah. Then, once you got to the 360, PS3, and Wii era, I feel like, depending on what you were looking for, then you could be upset. Yeah, they, they definitely, uh diverged a little bit more like i mean like sure 360 and ps3 were roughly the same but they were still quite different in many ways that kind of like how like ps3 was definitely more of a i feel like was more of a multimedia machine especially since it had um the blu-ray capability oh yeah that, that was definitely a but I think, personally, I think the 360 kind of won that on the, well, okay, the Wii technically won because it sold the most units and it basically brought in a new generation. Yeah. But I think the 360 won it for its history with online gaming. It basically paid, solidified how online gaming and also online you know, passes and other stuff will be done for better and for worse. And I think it, it also did a better job of encouraging, um, trying to tap into the indie space compared to the other companies. Yeah, that is, that is something that people forget sometimes, that yeah, 
it. 360 had a lot of indie titles, some of which that actually ended up being big on their own. I know that's where you people were able to find Cthulhu Saves the World, which is a pretty awesome RPG if you ever want to check that out. I, I haven't gone for that one. I, I know I, I got um, um, Breath of Death 7 or whatever it was. Uh, yeah. It goes from that, then Cthulhu Saves the World, and then uh, uh, Cosmic Star Heroin. Hmm. And then, uh, and then Cthulhu Saves Christmas, which is the prequel to Save the World. I'm gonna do a Let's Play of that around December. Mm -hmm. I'm also so... gonna do Oh, sorry, go, go ahead. This is just justifying, uh, sounds like a pretty interesting title. Oh, oh, it is. It's a purity of, like, Super Nintendo game. Whereas, Custom Star Heroin is like what would happen if uh, Fantasy Star and Chrono Trigger had a baby. Hmm. Aesthetic of, of Fantasy Star, battle style of Chrono Trigger, with the comedy of the Blue Saves the World. So, all in all, good matchup. <laughs> anyway, the other thing I'm probably going to be doing around December is maybe some live streaming. I'm thinking I want to do a Fallout 4 Santa Claus playthrough. Where I have to. I, I'm going to get, like, the Creation Club's Christmassy stuff, and I have to be the goodest guy in the wasteland. So, I have to do all the good quests, I have to make all my settlements Christmassy themed, and, you know, I have to play in a way that Santa would. So, I guess, stealthy. Because, you know, he's always sneaking into houses. <laughs> I, I, I'll figure out what's, like, the best way to do it. Maybe flamethrowers. You know, for chestnuts roasting. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll figure it out by then. I think I'm gonna have fun with that when Christmas comes around. That'll be nice. I'm kind of oh, still yeah. trying to fi figure... Ah, oh, stupid mommy. Um... I'm kind of wondering if I might do a thing for holidays. I'm still kind of thinking through that, like... Well, maybe for... Well, I could recommend a few games that could be good for, like, theming. Like, uh, for Halloween or for Christmas. Uh, might I recommend the PlayStation 1 Classic Parasite Eve? A relatively short, but uh, fun uh, RPG. I am kind of considering some stuff like that, though. Um, I'm thinking before I do Parasite Eve, I'm planning to, like, for, for Halloween at least, I'm thinking of trying to play through um, Resident Evil. Ah, Re RE1 Classic. Although the question is, which version? And, uh, uh, uh it's... Heavy, like, GameCube one. Yeah. Uh, it's whatever version's on the PlayStation Classic. I think it's the Director's ah. Cut. I see. You're not gonna, you're not gonna emulate or do anything. Fair enough. Fair enough. As for Christmas, I can think of plenty of good ones. I mean, if you ever could get uh, Re Dead Rising 4, I mean that's technically a Christmas game. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the. Uh... The, the, the die-hard method of deciding what is a Christmas movie. It happens during Christmas. I mean, that's the same thing with Parasite Eve. It technically takes place around Christmas. It counts. <laughs> and let's be honest, there's not enough Christmas games. Maybe Earthbound's Halloween hack? <laughs> nah. Just through it. I'm just fine with it. Since we're 
I'm talking recommendations. Allow me to just kinda throw a little one for what I have found earlier today and am reading now is a rather amusing manga whose title says a bit uh, The Life After Retirement of Magical Girls Well, the thing is mm -hmm. Given what I know what happens to magic girls nowadays uh, usually they don't get retirement <laughs> Well, I, hmm. I this being, I'm pretty sure it does sound like a fun kind of thing. You know, the whole, what happened to the heroes at the end of the adventure? I like that. That is it's kind of fun to look at. What's the link into the, you know, in our share thing? We'll take a look at it later. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound play yet or anything. It's just that... It does actually sound like a cool concept. It usually is, right? Hmm? Hell, sure. That's neat. I even had kind of a thought for maybe a fun, edgy anime. Okay, imagine this. So, it's a guy who keeps going on, like, Tinder dates, but the Tinder dates are all monster girls, and each one fails spectacularly for one reason or another, because it's funny. Yeah, I can see that. Honestly. Really, yeah. That's yeah. that that would work. Yeah, you know, slice of life comedy where he's just that lovable loser where usually in no fault of his own the date just goes horribly wrong. Like uh, the vampire girl, like you know, she's good in bed, but she wants to. Uh, she needs more sucking for other things. You know what I mean? Or uh, I don't know, like the ogre girl. He's like this chip. He's she lives at the gym, and you know he just can't keep up. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, the snake girl, of course, is good for cuddling, but then crushes them. Like, it's... Yeah, I... I think the demand for those kinds of... Yeah, like, urban yeah. fantasy stories has been on the rise lately. Yeah, I'm just kind of thinking, like, Monster Matsume, but it feels like a story within that universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know what it is with the internet and degeneracy. Thank God the Inquisition ain't hasn't seen the internet. <laughs> Speaking of, I'm gonna be doing a Dark Heresy game soon. Uh, we're, first, uh, we're going through like a uh, level 17 uh, module. Adventure for Pathfinder. I'm playing a Silk Monk. Wait. Dark Heresy game, but Pathfinder? No, 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 no. no. We're gonna do a Dark Heresy game, but first we're gonna do a Pathfinder module of level 17. Uh, adventure before we do it. And I'm gonna be playing a Silk Monk. Okay. Uh, that's a fair thing to be playing at those kinds of high levels, right? Well, I want, I've never get a chance to play a monk, and I know that at early levels they're not as cool, but an unchained monk at a higher level, there's a lot of cool stuff you get to do. I, yeah, I think I recall, it's like... One of the few classes in Pathfinder that I ever gave a chance to. Yeah. I mean... Ah, so close. 
but yeah. It is pretty good at a later level, and I figure a monk will be a per well, since I'm a sylph, I can get um, supernatural flying that's equal to my land speed. And get basically, I like moving at like uh, 70 feet per, you know, per round at higher levels. Uh, that's a lot of fly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to go with. Oh. Legit. Yeah. Anyway, once you get into Dark Heresy, I'm going to be playing a noble uh, assassin. Yeah, I'm going for the sniper route, because everybody needs a sniper on their team, right? <laughs> Feels like deja vu. Yeah, I'm basically kind of rehashing my old character from the last time we played. Only instead of like a hive street rat, uh, noble assassin, the second son, eldest son. So he was basically trained to be the shadow son, the one who will assassinate other rival heads, keep you know his head safe, stuff like that. He's not resentful or anything. He knows it's important. At the moment, the Inquisition's like, Hey, you're really good at what you do. You want to join us? Of course he's going to accept it. Who would be suicidal enough not to accept that from an Inquisitor? Actually, if you say no to an Inquisitor, that's a pretty good way to indicate, Oh, you must be a heretic. <laughs> right? <laughs> you can't win. That is sure is tough for those who are hermits. Uh, so other things I've been reading, I've been rereading uh, Darp and Droids. Oh, yeah, I need to catch uh, up on that at some point. Yeah. What's that? Mm -hmm. uh, Dark and Droids is a webcomic that's been around since, like, ooh, I want to say, like, 2008. But it basically um, recaps, like, the Star Wars movies and then puts dialogue over it. And the plot is, uh, um, Star Wars doesn't exist, and this whole, the whole plot of Star Wars it's a D&D-esque tabletop adventure. Suddenly all the plot holes and the plot makes a lot more sense. <laughs> well, let's, uh... assume that, uh... the viewers of the stream have been enlightened for... I just wanted to say, uh... I, I think I read all of it once already? Like, I can't recall if it was finished, but I did read what will translate that. From what I could tell, they finished the prequel and uh, original trilogy. They did Solo and Rogue One. They're now currently with uh, the seventh movie, Force Awakens. Oh, dang. Yeah, they're still going! Ah, that's, uh, that means I'm definitely not up to date then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I stopped reading years ago. I mean, I think they were on, uh, I think I last stopped reading at, uh, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, honestly, I had one of those kinds of realizations, shocking ones at that. Uh, lately as well too with uh with just kind of noticing oh yeah friendship is dragons is also still updating oh yeah i remember reading of that i know there was also a one piece uh, variant too yeah. oh my god 
Yeah, I think also what the One Piece one in Friendship with his Dragons uh, crossed over with some of their characters as well. Oh. Wait. Like, you Did know, one of the characters... Yeah, like one of the characters from Friendship with Dragon will show up and be like, Hey, I was playing in this game. Do you mind if I join in? And be like, you play like one of those side characters who wouldn't show up again. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I think uh, that was it. But hey, if there is one good thing about uh, Darf and Droids, it's the only time you'll ever see it was the first appearance of Great Idea Jar Jar. <laughs> Yeah, once that came uh, out, there was disturbance in the internet. Uh, can't wait for next week. Steve Summer Sale. Yeah, that's I right. was one. Then. I've been saving a ton of cash, so I'm excited for that. I'm gonna be getting some more of them Nippinichi games, a uh, few uh, indie games like uh, that shotgun chess game. Uh, you heard of that one? Okay. Yes. You could also get that uh, 5D uh, multiverse chess with time travel. I'm I'm not that big brain. <laughs> <laughs> Ow, my ears. Quote Todd Flanders. Ow, my freaking ears! <laughs> you know, it's really nice of Grunty to put uh, Banjo and Kazooie on top, you know, on there. <laughs> you know, onto the giant admin calendar. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, that's supposed to be an advent calendar. I'm forgetting how to activate the flight pad. some wet pipes. Let's see what changed. Since half an hour ago. Conrad, what are you doing at this very moment? Being noisy. Brent, Brent, 
Don't be a smartass. I'm, I'm trying to check, like, what is making that sound. That is when I am typing my keyboard. That is on my phone, probably. Okay. Yay. Always nice to get more jiggies. Getting jiggy with it. Let's see. Are those the health extensions? No, that's just a area of entrance thing. The health extensions are these empty honeycombs. Because, you know, he's a bear, and bears healed by honey. So if you have more honey, you get more healing. Eh? Oh, seems reasonable. A lot of water levels, eh? What was that? A lot of water levels today, eh? You, your voice is super muffled, Conrad. You need to... I, 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 I don't know. Enunciate? Move your mouth away from the mic or something. Is it better now? Yes. No, this, this, this is, this is, this shit's super weird. You know, what's the difference between me making muffled and not IRL? Just which hand I'm holding the phone with. I mean, Nothing different. I mean, you might be covering a hole depending on how you're holding it. I was holding it with two fingers in front of my mouth. In the same position. I don't know. It's, it's like one of my hands is a better transmitter for radio or some stuff. <sighs> I don't get it either, Plank. I don't get it either. This Justin, children, are they the future? Kind of overdosing on the references there, Bren. I'm sorry, I can't resist. Oh my god, I just remembered. There was an actual joke that just, that went over my head when I was a kid, but it was actually kind of clever. But it was a scene in Ed and Eddie where I think Kevin was threatening Eddie. He's like, alright, it's time to meet your maker. And then Eddie's like, Bonaduce? <laughs> Which, Danny Bonaduce was the creator of Ed and Eddie. I always love jokes like that. Like, I think there was even, like, one where, like, Mickey in, like, a short is, like, feeling, you know, it's, like, days and stuff, it's like, Walt, is that you? <laughs> so, you actually found off for full breaking somewhere. I can enjoy it. Or nice in-jokes. It at least makes for fun trivia if I identify an in joke. Hmm. I was worried that you got stuck there. Yeah, stupid things that hide in the walls. Yeah, it's those goddamn wood crawlers. 
And then they take over the house, and then there goes the neighborhood. So this was like a fish or something first. I think it's supposed to be like a giant tadpole or something. Oh, for fuck's sake. Good question. What the hell are they supposed to be? Yeah. Like a part of a beehive. Just got straight up going invincible. Yeah, it's like they just have like two limbs and a big old tail. An evil polywog. Smokestack, form a foot flop into the hexagon shaped area just above the doorway to the entrance. Oh, in the smokestack, not on top. Uh. Oh. Wood. Oh, good. Are we going to spend three episodes in there? <laughs> no. At least you're getting your money's worth in this game, right? You paid nothing for it. Well, I mean, it does cost money to have that Nintendo Switch Online subscription. <laughs> No, you paid for the subscription. The game was technically free. I I consider myself paying for it. For for for. I for know. Sure. I'm just, I'm just the end. Stupid green thing. 
Death Battle is going to have quite the interesting fight. Hercules versus Sun Wukong. Yeah, I don't really watch their stuff. Yeah, but I like... So... I Go ahead. I'm saying here, though, I gotta ask, which version of Su Wukong are they actually pitting Hercules against? They're going for like the actual ancient myth version. So <laughs> I'm just probably gonna put my money on the guy whose pole is literally a pillar of heaven. That should be heavy. And even if it's not a strength issue, I think Sun Wukong could outthink Hercules. I mean Hercules ain't dumb. But he's a very straightforward thinker. Yeah, like, unlike the modern depictions of Hercules, the, the original. Like, may have seen kind of innovative in comparison, but, uh. Uh, my money is on Wukong as well. Yeah. Speed, cleverness, and if we're going with the literal interpretation of he's always carrying around a heavenly pillar in the form of his pole. Yeah, I think he outclasses Hercules. And yeah. mm -hmm. Hercules has that. Mm -hmm. The best way I can describe Hercules is, uh, he is a very, very well-made, uh, barbarian archetype. But he actually has a few points to intelligence, so he's actually very sad. He is he's strong, enduring, persistent, and not dumb, but... I, I'd say that he's kind of it. He's the kind of guy who would see a maze and go, I s and tell the GM, I smash through the walls. What? Well, if there's a maze in front of me, I smash through the walls so I can get through the maze. Uh -huh. Hey, the logic is there. Honestly, I, I could see the battle going like Sun Wukong just kind of makes the Hercules slip on a banana peel or something at the end of the fight. That'd be one hell of a way to kill him. Uh. Nothing like an ice cold bottle of coke. I wonder where Argyle is. Probably busy with something. Yeah, probably. Oh, he's right there. I'm 
man, I guess in my defense, I actually forgot that you streamed today, so he might have forgotten. Maybe. is do you want to end the game tonight or wait until Arnold's back well I did kind of want to do it with uh Argo around yeah though so it's I might. Yeah, I am getting tired. But I would stay up for you, or at least try to for, you know, the finale. Yeah, I think I might. Okay. Huh? Currently debating my options too right now, between go bad or go food. Go ahead and stop here for now. Yeah. It's one of them tired evenings anyway. And then you can finish the game with a fresh, you know, you know, feeling refreshed and everything, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Just gonna exit the level. You just save an exit and then you'll be out of Grunty Slayer. I guess there's that too. Yeah. Say good next time, we're gonna kick that witch's ass. Mm hmm. Peace out. Good night.